All right, guys, KK4PYN back again with you here for a long-anticipated video. Um, let me make this bigger real quick. Uh, I've been trying to do this video forever um, about Chrome OS, and I just haven't got around to it. Today, I went ahead and upgraded Screencastify to Premium, which is how I'm recording the screen here. So let me get a couple things out of the way right up front. Um, this webcam sucks really bad. It's a Microsoft Live Cam. I don't know why it's so dark. Um, thankfully, no one really likes looking at me anyway, so it's not a big deal. I just, I needed to show you a couple things, what's going on, um, so you can kind of get a visual in the world type view. Um, anyway, also, um, if any of the stuff stutters, um, I've, I've got this little Chrome box maxed out as far as what I can do. Um, but I'll explain that in a minute. And um, I'm using a really cheap, you know. So it's it's amazing that I can do it with this small of a device. But at any rate, um, yeah. So basically, this video is about Chrome OS, um, which is the operating system from Google. Let me show you what we're working with here. The blinking blue light is from the USB sound card. This. Um, USB hub is plugged into here because I ran out of USB ports to do all this stuff I want to show you. Anyway, this is an Asus Chromebox CN60. Um, that is not part of it. That's just one of those little USB lights. Um, and it's got 2 gigs of RAM and a 1.4 gig Celeron. No, Lucy, you can't. Well, what do you want, girl? Anyway. Sorry for the motion sickness there. Every time you try to make a video, the pets want something out of you. Anyway, so that's what we're using. It's an absolute mess because i got a bunch of stuff plugged into it. Right here is our um, RTLSDR.com dongle. You can see that. Um, I've got the USB sound card plugged into it because this thing has a broken audio jack, which you'll see in a minute. That's actually how we're recording everything. That's an Andrea um, Pure Audio. I've got... Um, this is the... Um, RS-232 to USB adapter that goes over to the FT-857. And I've also got the webcam plugged in and a, a wireless mouse. So, I mean, this thing is pretty, uh, there you go, Woo! pretty maxed out. Now, I've got my Dell as my main, you know, Windows computer for work and for doing more heavy-duty applications and stuff like that, like using the, you know, USB scopes and software defined radio, um, stuff like that. But anyway, um, enough blabbering. That's what we're using. I'm going to show you this device on Amazon real quick, just so you can kind of get a, a better look at it. Uh, I can't really pull it out of here. And again, uh, the video may stutter or, or something like that. Um, I'm really maxing this thing out, but I've, I've got everything plugged in because I just want to show it to you working. So um, if I unplugged all this extra stuff and I wasn't like recording the screen, takes up a lot of CPU too. So anyway, um, that's what we got going on here. For a keyboard, I'm using this awesome Red Dragon um, mechanical job. I love it. It's uh, I'm not going to press any keys right now because it'll stop me, but it's just fantastic. Um so I'm going to put this back up here. Sorry for the motion sickness again. Just until I um, come back and get you to show you some more stuff. So let me minimize this ugly face. And let's go over here to Amazon. Um, this is what I'm using. It's the CN60. Um, they call it a M004U. CN60 is another model name for it. Anyway, um, here's what we're working with. So this little device I got on eBay for um, about 50 bucks. Um, and it, it had a broken audio jack and he couldn't get the software to work. Uh, so I just did a fresh install of Chrome on it and everything works fantastic except for the audio port. So you can see here it's got two USB 3 jacks on the front. Um Full-size SD card slot on the side. Now, I have installed at one point a 64-gig SD card um, to save stuff to. I don't know if there's a way to save apps to it like you would on, like, say, a Windows 10 laptop, which I can do. But this thing has a 16-gig SSD built into it. Um, then on the back here, you've got your DCN. That's a 19-volt DC jack, gigabit Ethernet, two more USB 3 ports, 
HDMI uh, and a display port. And then this is the combination mic uh, speaker jack. I've, mine's broken. I've tried to fix it. This thing's really pretty easy to take apart. Uh, the memory is upgradable. I am going to upgrade it to four gigs, um, which is the max that Chrome will address, which is fine. Um, and the SSD will come out. Um, there is a creation tool. So I guess people have upgraded to larger SSDs, M2 SSDs, but you know, everything stores in the cloud. This is a Google machine. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of you guys out there are like, ah, Google, whatever. I use Google all the time. Gmail works great. You know, um, this is an older machine. They've got new ones that are a lot faster. There's some with the core I threes and all sorts of stuff. But like I said, this was 50 bucks. Um, I use it just every day as my device, you know, for browsing the web, for doing Twitter, for watching YouTube videos. Uh, it just works. You know, I, I never have to worry about anything. Um, it just, it works, it works great. So, you know, I went with it. I've got a Chromebook and my wife has a Chromebook that we use regularly for non kind of work stuff, you know, but you can do so much with this. If I really went into everything that this machine can do or that Chrome OS in general can do, this would be a four hour video. Um, I know nobody wants to watch me drone on about stuff for four hours. Um, so you can research Chrome boxes. The difference obviously between this and um, a Chromebook is that this, you plug into a monitor, you plug into keyboard and mouse, and um, you go from there. So um, as far as the OS goes, just real fast, I'll give you, and it keeps updating itself. The whole thing boots in less than five, 10 seconds tops. I mean, it, it's just, it's fast, it's easy. Um, but again, this is not so much about Chrome. This is Chrome as it relates to ham radio, because this is a ham radio YouTube channel. If you guys really want to know more about Chrome, I don't mind doing an exhaustive video because um, I am a Chrome user. I have been for a long time um, since some of the original Chrome boxes or Chromebooks came out um, and I love it. So I'll do a, an hour video or two. I don't care. A live cast, whatever you want. Um, can I cast this to, I don't think I could do that anyway, but yeah, so here we go. Um, let me just give you a quick tour around the operating system over here. You got all your settings that you need. This is hooked up to Ethernet. I've got a Bluetooth mouse hooked up. Your volume controls. Uh, you know, you control what what you want out of there. It's just really easy. All your normal use apps are down here. I'm not gonna. I'm always gonna have this tab open because it's recording. Let me just go ahead and switch over to here. Um, it's recording. So if I close the tab, I'm not sure what happens. I don't want to bother with it anyway. Um, so, and then your web store, the newer Chrome books and the newer Chrome boxes will actually support some Android apps, which is amazing. This is a little bit older hardware. I don't think the Celeron will do it. I think you have to have an ARM based Chrome box or Chromebook, but here's uh, your little control bar. You can search on your device, which is great. This is a general search. This is a general Google search. Even if your browser's closed, you can, if you search for an app that you have on here, like if I typed in radio receiver, it would show me a result as a built-in app and it will show me the result from the web, which is great. Um, I've got a bunch of apps installed. Um, you can see there's apps for everything. Uh, whoops. Bam. Um, here's the web store, which I'll show you in a second, but you know, here's Google drive calendar, you know, all your Google stuff, YouTube, weather underground works or some weather apps, voice to text. Um, there's a webcam app that you can see your, your web, um, Code Envy is uh, for some doing some programming. I've got um, some others I'm going to show you here in a minute that are kind of um, ham radio related. Tinkercad is a, a CAD and EDA program, which works pretty good. Um, Cloud9, another kind of online coder. Chrome Remote Desktop is great. So I can take control of my Windows computer with this and... Um, Use it as an extended desktop. It's fantastic. Here's Kindle for Chrome. Chrome Do We Know, unfortunately, I don't think works anymore, but um, you used to be able to program uh, Arduino through that. I've now got Arduino Create. Arduino Create is an online IDE for Arduino, which allows you to build, compile, and upload code in the web. It's like 99 cents, well worth it. Um, this will print. Printing with Chrome is very clunky. Um, it, it is not a smooth experience unless you have an HP printer. 
Um, and then there's an app for HP printing, which works good, but it's clunky to set up. Um, you know, so at any rate, uh, there's some other stuff on here that you can't see, but um, it depends. I've got two different Google accounts. So um, in the web store, there's, I'm, I could spend all day here, okay, but there's thousands of apps for just about everything you would ever want to do, okay? Uh, literally, <laughs> there's some stuff that works offline. You know, it doesn't always have to be hooked up. Um, you know, you're not going to use this as a photo editing machine or video editing or anything like that. There are programs that do it. It's very basic and limited, um, or at least the last time I looked at it. I, I haven't looked at some of the newer ones. But, um, again, I could spend an hour just in here going through all the different stuff. You can download different themes. There's lots of games. Everything shows up here into the uh, um, your little toolbar up here. And quick note, because it kind of does replay, like I've got these extensions, Morse Player. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I can do some more stuff here. I can uh, upload a, um, a text document and it will start. Um, there you go. Uh, it'll start pumping out Morse code there. Um, there's Circuit Simulator. Uh, there's just so much you can do with this machine. It's unbelievable. So this is circuit lab. I'm just going to go ahead and launch this. This is an online EDA program. It works great. Uh, I cannot say enough about it. Um, there's some other ones, but it just, you know, you can do so much with this, um, that it really kind of blows my mind. All right, so let me close down some of these tabs here. And yeah, even with two gigs of RAM, I can switch between eight or nine, um, eight or nine tabs, and everything works great. Okay. So all right, so that's good. I just wanted to check that we are past the ten minute mark because the free version of Screencastify only allows you to uh, to go ten minutes. So I paid the twenty four bucks a year for the premium so that you guys can listen to me. For longer, which I know you were excited about. So, all right, let me get out of here. Let's do some ham radio stuff. Um, first thing I want to show you, uh, and this isn't just ham radio, but this is a radio receiver app. Um, when you look in the app store, just type in radio receiver. It uses this kind of cool old school radio thing. And I'm going to grab the mic uh, camera again and show you. I've got this hooked up to an RTL SDR dongle. Now, this is just the really kind of good RTL SDR blog one. I have used it with the other ones, the super cheap ones. It all works the same. It's great. It just works. Okay. So basically what you get is this little interface here and it uses, you don't have to configure any drivers or everything. It's, it's amazing. You plug in for anyone that's ever done RTL SDR on Windows. Okay. <laughs> Trying to get the the drivers to work and the and the software calibrated and everything, just a huge pain. This you just plug it in, it works. Um, mainly because it's Linux based and uh, Linux is even more plug and play than Windows. Plug and play is um, plug and play is kind of an old thing, but anyway. Um, so let me just go ahead and I don't know how it's going to mix the audio here. I think it works pretty good, but we're just going to power on. This is a local FM station. You can see here's FM. Um, Bolt to take All right, into now their it's, and fill it's stuttery. Detail at AdventHealth.com. It's stuttery because this is the computer's trying to run so much FM other stuff. FM Orlando, okay. Daytona Beach. Um, I don't want to get in trouble with rebroadcast here, but um, I'm Jeremy Hobson. So you can change the frequency. You can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, there's scan. Day. We have you know, to live with the results of you can record, which is kind of cool, record an FM broadcast, okay? Save your stations. I haven't saved any here. Um, but let me go ahead and change here. Here's weather band, okay? Uh, this RTL SDR is plugged into a uh, disco that's outside, but anyway, there's the weather band. It's got a bunch of different weather bands, okay? Kind of cool. Now you can see here that is a saved Thursday, thing. Did I save anything else? Breezy. Nope, just those two. Highs in the upper um, northeast winds 15 to. Now this is free tuning. 
Um, free tuning literally is just what it sounds like. Um, let's try this one forty seven one two zero 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 zero. Mode narrow F, narrow band FM. Nobody's keying up right now. Let's try 144390000. Is that right? What well, was. Coast into the afternoon. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, it's off because the step is really high. Anyway, you can free tune to anything. Um, if you put an up converter on there, you can free tune to a uh, one five three seven zero zero. Uh, there is squelch here. There we go. <laughs> a little bit better. Um, trying to find. I mean, if we just do weather channel one six two four seven five zero zero zero. So there you go. That's basically you can tune in anything, and with an up converter, which I haven't played with yet, because I mainly use this just listen FM. It'll actually do AM lower sideband and upper sideband, which is amazing. <laughs> so this is an RTL receiver on your computer, okay? Um, on Chrome OS or on a Chromebook with a, a fifteen or twenty dollar um, thing, and the sound is fantastic. It's got. Um, <laughs> this great thing here, you can see, you can change frequency, <sighs> and, and it's free. And keyboard, you know, there's some different settings um, that this thing has. Um, frequency correction, gain, using an up converter, uh, it enables, you know, free tuning. You can go in here and pre do all your presets. So if... If, if the Chromebook or the Chromebox or a Chrome OS device was your only um, thing, you know, you're not out of the ballpark. You can still play with software-defined radio. It's amazing. Um, now, that particular piece of hardware I have not seen any updates for lately, but uh, it just continues to work. It always works. It works on every device I have. If you have a Chromebox like I do, and then a Chromebook as a as a cheap, you know you can get Chromebooks for 150 bucks. Um, the good ones at 270 at under 300 dollars you can get a very very good Chromebook. Um, and then for 500 dollars you get like crazy touchscreen, you know, like I said, i5, lots of RAM, just it, high quality like aluminum ones. Mine's a Dell. It's designed for education. Um, I don't have it right here, or else I'd show it to you. Um, and it's really a rugged device. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I can't say enough about it. Okay. So, um, on with the ham radio thing here, let's get into something that I discovered just by, you know, every time I see an app store or anything like that, I type in, um, <laughs> ham radio into the, into the thing. And it's amazing what it pops up. So this is whiskers radio. There's also whiskers, um, like uh, kind of different things, but if we go into here, okay, if I hit add instrument, you can see that this works with a lot of very, very popular radios, uh, the Elecraft KX2 and KX3, K3, um, so it completely supports Elecraft, the 817 and the F F57, when I have a Kenwood, a Sark remote, you know, uh, 
I haven't played with some of these other ones because I haven't needed to, but just an amazing amount of stuff, okay? Um, it gives you settings like here, you know. So um, the data outputs, what's this even all about? Um, yeah, so it does a lot of stuff. So anyway, here's my FT-857, okay? And uh, I'm plugged in with the... Um, just the cheap eBay USB to CAT control cable um, into the FD-857. I'm going to get motion sickness again real quick. Uh, just with this dongle here, okay? And, then it, and here's the 857 sitting over here. Um, so you can see what's going on there. Uh, I'm going to connect to this thing. And then, boom, you can see that the VFO matches what's on the radio, okay? Um, and which is kind of cool and now this this stuff here doesn't do anything none of these buttons work it's just this graphical representation um, you can't change any menu options it's not like HRD or FT-857 commander um, it all you can change is the frequency and the mode um, and of course the band in between your two um, uh, VFO. So let me turn this up. All right. So there's weather radio in the background. Okay. And what I'm going to do is uh, turn this on and it gives us a, a little scope thingy here. Okay. Uh, S meter. Um, I'm going to switch over to a repeater here. Okay. Now um, it's already programmed in the memory of the Yesus so it makes it easier um, well look at that there's somebody on the repeater so you can see here I got s9 plus and if you look at if you look at the uh, s meter here you can see that so um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a QSO in the air here just uh, you, Watch the screen and we'll see what's going on here. Let me see if I can break in on these guys. And this is my local repeater that I love here. Let me see if I can break in on this QSO here. Hey guys, can I break in here for a second? KK4PYN. Right on. Thanks. Uh, just so you know, you guys are on YouTube right now, um, or you will be shortly. Um, making a little video here about Chrome OS and the FT-857 and stuff. So uh, we're just kind of watching what's going on on the screen. Um, and I heard you guys on here. Figured I'd break in. And uh, like I said, you guys are going to be famous on YouTube. I'll, um, you can just type my call sign, KK4PYN, into YouTube, and you'll see your video here probably, I don't know, in hour or two however long it takes to upload this thing is kind of crazy but uh yeah just breaking in real quick um i'm gonna back on out of here you guys continue with your cue so i appreciate it kk4 pyn clear and monitoring so you can see here that <laughs> i mean this is amazing it's a you know i paid 49 bucks for this it's interfacing with the with the ft857 and what else could you really ask for? <laughs> it gives you all these options for the FFT window and just, you know, smoothing and free software, you know. So anyway, um, I believe this changes between presets. But so those guys stop talking for whatever reason. Maybe they don't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, but you can see here, and let me go ahead, and we're going to point it at the, I'm going to go ahead and back to the weather channel here. All right. Um, as you can see right now on the screen, it's lower sideband, and if you look at the display of the Yesu here, it's lower sideband. Go back to FM. 
you know, so that all works. Uh, and then you'll see here in the S meter that it's just going to be, it's going to smooth out the line because weather radio is a constant S nine or whatever. So, um, so gosh, that's just kind of amazing. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like I said, I just, I happened upon this thing. Um, let me go ahead and shut this down and it'll, when I turn off the radio, it doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, it just sits there. There's no crashing, no whatever. I can turn it back on and it just reconnects. So but we'll go ahead and just hit disconnect. I'm going to close that out. Um, so if you have an FT-857, this is the worst webcam in the history of the entire world. It's probably a benefit in my case because I'm just not that pretty. But uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, this stuff is... Whiskers. Uh, let's look at the website here. Uh, yeah, Whiskers IO was the other one. Um, geez. Uh, it does that, and then Whiskers Radio. So... It, it's a great little program. Um, highly recommend it. You know, it, it, it looks like with the Elecraft, it gives you some some advanced functionality there. I don't know. Um, I wonder what it's like. On Windows. You know, I, like I said, I use um, FT-857 Commander. Um, or HRD, which HRD has been bricked lately for some reason. I, I probably have to go with the non-free version. Um, but <laughs> it's just kind of like, wow. You know what I mean? Like the fact that people are making, oh, the FDM Duo. Oh, I haven't seen that one before. I mean, I've seen this radio. Obviously, I can't afford it, but yeah. It just, you know, people are developing more and more because, so you got Whiskers Nuclear. What? Radiation monitoring. Great. People are realizing that you don't want, not everybody runs Windows, okay? So they're developing for Linux. When you develop for Linux, you're basically developing for Chrome. Um, it's just a matter of getting it in there. And, and everything just works so easily, okay? Um let me go to Arduino Create. Let me, let's just use this. There you go. So as I said, here's web results, okay? And here's device results. So most of the stuff in, in Chrome pops up as a browser. It's browser-based. That's what they're talking about, okay? So we're going to sign in here. I don't have a Arduino hooked up to the system, so I don't know what it's going to do. But, um, yeah, so it allows you to – this thing's capable of USB serial. That's all there is to it, okay? So um, it allows me to choose boards, blah, 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 okay, and um, upload sketches. I think it actually uploads faster than just using the IDE, okay? It's uh, an Amazon Web Services program, which is great. Um, you know, you got all your examples here. Um, it auto populates the examples for your board right now. It's not seeing a board. So, um, but just, it, if you bought a $250, you know, Chromebook and, and honestly, you can get used ones. Some of the first generation ones, um, from Dell or Samsung or Acer or whatever, you know, for a hundred dollars, um, the whole, oh, well, the operating system is too fast for it. Now that doesn't apply to Chromebooks. I, I, it runs as fast now as it does when I got it. And I've done 15 or 20 or a thousand updates. I don't know. Every time it'll pop up a little arrow here in the corner that says restart your Chromebook to upload 
uh, or to, to update it. And it just works. Um, does it have the functionality of some of the newer ones? No. But the basic experience is the same, which blows my mind. Okay. Um, what else can you ask for in a cheap device? I wouldn't say it's throwaway price, but like you have a Chromebook and that's the other thing is it's, it's, there's no viruses. It never gets a blue screen. If there's a problem with it, it just kind of, it, you know, it'll slow down or it, at a very extreme thing. If you really do something crazy, it kind of reboots itself. That's about it. And that's only happened. I've had this thing for three or four years, probably longer. And it's only happened once, maybe twice. Okay. Uh, the only reason I even know about it and an update fixed everything. Um, when it rebooted, it gave me an update symbol and I updated right then it rebooted again and boom, it was fixed. So you can go um, online and read about Chrome OS. There's plenty of YouTube videos about Chrome OS, about Chromebooks. Um, Asus is coming out with it or has come out with a new Chrome box called the Chrome box three. Samsung makes some Dell has made some, the form factor is tiny. It takes up no space. It takes up no power. Uh, you know, and, and it'll do useful things. Let me, you know, like I said, if you're into Google, then, you know, it, it's a no brainer, but I just, I wanted you guys to see this because if you're on a budget, okay, then a Chrome device is the way to go. If you're not super tech savvy, a Chrome device is the way to go. The reason for that is, like I said, when I plug this stuff in, when I plug my um, RTL dongle in, when I plug in the radio uh, interface, the um, USB serial, it just works. Now, you have to select the port, but when you go in to select the port, even on Arduino, in the Arduino ID, it only pops up the ones that are available. And if you just got a device plugged in there, it automatically pops up with that one you select it and you're on your way so if you're struggling with windows if you're just if if you're just tired of all the, the garbage use chrome um for ham radio it works you know uh here's another great thing think about web sdr you know web sdr we can go in and you could basically turn this into a radio um worldwide because you've got web SDR. So it's more than enough hardware to run this thing, okay? Come on. You might be off of the wheel. Oh, we just messed up the filter. Yeah. Anyway, I haven't played with WebSDR in a while. But, so you can basically turn this thing into a radio. Um, it just works. I'm, I'm sure, and I hope, oh, that's the other thing. If you are a business user, now, my um, company's VPN does not allow use with the Chrome browser. Okay. There's this, um, you know how some things only run in Internet Explorer? There's this compatibility thing, okay? <laughs> but um, it actually runs your tabs as Internet Explorer, okay? Um, and I've got my company's VPN, which is Cisco AnyConnect, um, loaded up, and I was able to log into my VPN, okay? Now, the app on the other side um, does not work on Chrome, and it, this spoofer, um, wouldn't get past that. It allows you at different versions, but I've tried it on other things that would not work in Chrome browser and would only work in Internet Explorer, and it worked, um, which is amazing. Okay, so there you go. Um, what can't you do with it? You know what I mean? Um, my weather station is offline right now, but anyway, um, even if you just want a cheap device to hook up to a monitor somewhere to do one thing. Um, versus using up a Raspberry Pi. Like, let's say you wanted, oh, hmm, just a radar, okay? Um, 
this will run Flash, okay? So you could have a dedicated box for radar. You could have a dedicated box for your security cameras, okay? Um, you could do a lot of stuff because it just it works, okay? Uh, and everything works well. So that's it, guys. Um, <laughs> Morse code translator. Uh, here's a little audio equalizer. It does everything, okay? Uh, that is specific to the app that you're in, so, you know, but whatever. It just, it does everything. So, um, it, it works with an RTL dongle. If you want a, a cheap way to get an RTL dongle up and running without configuring anything, you can use that radio receiver app. Um, I haven't even looked lately to see if anything else has been made. I don't know. I want to get a new Chromebox that supports Android um, apps because I want to see if I can load up SDR Touch. If I could load up SDR Touch on a 30-inch display or 27 or whatever like I got, I'd be in hog heaven. Um, SDR Touch is great software. And then there's a million other ham radio-related um, you know, programs that, that that would open up to me, like Echo Link and Zello and, um, you know, TeamSpeak for IRN, uh, just the, the list goes on. If you think about all the, the ham radio applications, uh, Pocket RX TX would give me full control of my rig. Um, Pocket RX TX with, uh, well, it's not sitting here, of course, uh, but I've got the Bluetooth dongle for the FT-857 um, would allow me full control of my, of my rig. So there you go. Um, you guys, make sure... Uh, if you have any questions about Chrome, I can help you out. Um, like I said, I've been using it for a while. Power user, whatever you want to call me. Um, I figured out printing. I've, I've figured out just about everything you can do with it. I'm sure I'll learn more every day. But um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you got here because you were looking for something about Chrome or software defined radio or anything like that, um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. My videos are kind of sporadic because uh, I travel for work uh, and I really only make videos when I'm home here in the shack. I'll make some out on the road, you know, eventually, but um, make sure you follow me on Twitter at KK4PYN and um, keep up to date with uh, what's going on. I try and keep it ham radio and electronics related. Um, I know if you watch my channel and, and stuff, you'd there's a lot of stuff in there with retro computing because I'm a Commodore 64 nerd completely. Um, so, you know, just get into this stuff. You know, there's a million different things on the web here. Uh, there's lots of videos. This video um, I'm hoping is going to be kind of a, a bookmark for some people that, you know, you can go in and, and see that you can do. So let's talk about... Um, investment if you're trying to set up a small little area um for equipment versus uh you know like windows based stuff or or even linux okay chrome box if we let's just do this okay let's go on amazon am i not recording anymore I oh, know it's being recorded. Wow, 38 minutes. Holy cow. Normally there's a little red arrow up in there, okay? We're just going to hit Chromebox into Amazon here. And I've slowed right down. My internet, by the way, is horrible. I only get like 25 megs here. Wow, come on, Amazon. There we go. So Chromebox at new prices. Um, You know, 230, 180. Here's a Chrome bit. That's just a dongle that runs Chrome. Theoretically, you could do everything that I've done here today with this thing that plugs into the back of a, you know. Um, I don't know why that's so expensive. And here's a brand new Asus Chromebook. Ruggedized, water resistant. 180 degree Intel Celeron 4. Okay, 200 bucks.
Give me a break. Um, one of the things that makes the Chrome devices cheaper is that they don't have to pay for Windows. The manufacturer has to pay for that Windows license. Um, granted, it's a bulk license, but when you make a Windows device, it gets more expensive. I know there's a lot of like $99 or $150 Windows computers out there. Uh, but, I mean, here you go. Here's, you know, 150 208 These devices are affordable, okay? There's more expensive ones, okay? Don't get me wrong. Um, my wife just got the uh, Samsung Chromebook Pro. Uh, which is, look at this, refurbished, 124 Now, this is Amazon, okay, which you know that things are a little bit more expensive. Here's one with 4 gigs, Samsung, LED backlit. All right. Um, the, her new Chromebook is also USB-C, which is kind of cool. But if we were to hop over here to electronics, cars, blah, blah, fashion, eBay, and look for a Chromebook, A lot of people buy these things, don't understand them, and then get rid of them. You could probably even find them on like Craigslist or something like this. Here you go. This is the exact model of Chromebook that my wife had originally, the Samsung uh, 303C, uh, Samsung, <laughs> Samsung, and here you go, sixty dollars, free shipping. I bet it works um, as long as it's not cracked or something. Minor scuffs, motor on the bottom inside keyboard. But there you go, Chrome. Um, if you buy a new Chromebook or Chromebox, Google the reset procedure. Uh, it normally includes either a combination of keystrokes or there's a little hole on the side that you stick a um, uh, paper clip into and it'll reset it and reinstall Chrome. And it's basically like doing a reinstall on Windows or Linux. And you've got a fresh, um, you know, it wipes the drive. Uh, everything is, is fantastic. Um, if you don't want to do that, go into the settings here and go down to the bottom, hit advanced, reset. Okay. So here's your restore, a regular restore. And here's, um, power wash, power wash wipes the drive puts the newest version of Chrome on there, or if not, I mean, it reinstalls whatever it had, and it's, I don't think there's a recovery partition. I think it just downloads it. I'm not sure how it does it, but anyway, you get a clean Chrome install, okay? Um, so there you go. Uh, look, it even shows you where you want to download stuff. Um, you can download, if you do a lot of downloads, you can download to um, uh, an SD card, but yeah, so you can get um, Chrome devices cheap, okay? And they make a great everyday laptop. The battery life on them is incredible because it's not running a big, heavy operating system. I mean, look at 50, 60 bucks, you can get something. $33. $33 with a mouse and a power adapter. Well, okay, 10 bucks shipping, 50, whatever. So, you know. Uh, but it just, it. I'm really, let's do a Chrome box. And there's also a thing called a Chrome base. They went kind of nutso in the beginning, but um, here you go. Core i3, 65 bucks, $75, $55. You know, this is the one I got. They want 150 bucks for it. I think it's brand new. Anyway, you can see people are getting rid of these things for a number of reasons. Oh, it's, they don't know how to use it or they, they just have to have windows or whatever, but um, it, it's just, for the money, it can't be beat. And also, for all you Linux nerds out there, there is a, uh, a way to load Linux onto these uh, in a dual boot called Ubuntu. Um, or you can just wipe it, and some of them you can just put a full Linux install on. Um, you know, granted it has to be a lightweight one because it's got a 16 gig SSD, I'm, I'm sure there's a way to put in a bigger SSD and then load Linux onto that. And at that point, for 50 or 60 bucks, you'd have a decent, um, a decent, look at, uh, you know, i3. It's probably got four gigs of RAM. If you put Linux on it, it may be to address 
may be able to address more than that four gigs of RAM. You might be able to get eight out of it, whatever is the max for that board. But that almost takes away from the beauty of Chrome OS. It starts up instantly. It just works. And, uh, you know, I've never had a problem with it. Um, that couldn't be solved by either an update or just, eh, just reboot it. And, and you don't lose any data. You know, everything's stored in the cloud. That 16 gig SSD is mainly to store, um, uh, you know, apps. And then, like, if you go into my docs, like, you save everything to Google Drive anyway. Um, but if you go into docs here, eventually, you know, I've saved some stuff. And this is saved locally. Any day now. Um, you know, a bunch of Word documents and stuff like that. I'm not going to get deep into that, but you know, that, that's all there is to it. It's, it's a simple device. It works. You can use it for ham radio in a pinch, uh, or not in a pinch. If you just want to sit around and listen to the radio, or if you need an easy, you know, if you're FT-857, if the screen is gone, um, you can use the, that whiskers radio to see your, your frequency display. Can you get in and change menu options and stuff like that? No, but if you go into the uh, manual of the FT-857, it it gives you step-by-steps for getting into the menu and adjusting things, and you can kind of feel that out, but you'll still be able to have your VFO and change modes and stuff like that. So it just, it's fantastic. Guys, pick up a Chrome device um, to play around with at that price, you know, it makes a great second computer. It makes a great living room computer. Hook it up to a TV with HDMI. Uh, it makes a great, you know, um, anything. Um, put it in your shack. Hook it up to an old monitor, you know, and and just go for it. For 10 bucks, you can get an HDMI to VGA converter, uh, you know, so and you can do whatever you want. Or you plug it into the second input on a monitor you already got from your Windows computer, and you don't have to have your giant, you know, tower running in the background with a bunch of fans and heat and all that stuff. This thing doesn't even get warm to the touch barely. Um, right now it is kind of because I'm running so much stuff. Um, and I can assure you, once I turn off the screen casting, this device is snappy. Um, snappy like my laptop, which is a, you know, a Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it just, it works great. So... Like I said, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Um, my channel can be boring, but I'm, I'm coming into some new stuff here soon. I'm getting ready to do a massive technology update, which will include a new Chromebox. <laughs> so, you know, just you guys stay tuned. Um, stay tuned to find out what's going on with my project. If you're into Arduino, if you're into Arduino, you need to follow my channel right now. Um, if you're into Commodore 64 or retro computing, you need to follow my channel as well. And follow me on Twitter at KK4PYN. I'm going to shut up now. I'm sure a lot of you fell asleep around the 15-minute mark. Um, but I, I've been excited about this video. It's something I've wanted to do. It's something I've wanted to share with you. I know there's five or six out there that will probably watch to the very end. And thank you. Um, we did get a winner, by the way, uh, I think. Uh, for the giveaway if, if any of you guys watch my live stream and as I get more and more stuff that I got to get rid of I'm just going to start if I think have things that are useful that are new in the package I'll just do a giveaway at the end of my long videos to reward you guys to stick with me to the end so um, you know I don't mind shipping a little something here or there out uh, what can we give away today I gave away that proto shield on the last video let's give away another proto shield how about that if you stuck with me to the end, I've got another Proto Shield for Arduino. This one's already built, brand new, never used, still in the bubble pack. Okay, um, it's a SEP brand, which I got from a local Radio Shack uh, retailer type person. But here's the Proto Shield with some buttons for Arduino, uh, Uno form factor, um, and leave me a comment. Tell me what your build or why you need a proto shield, and um, I'll give it to you. I'll ship it to you free, no strings attached. You can also put a mini breadboard on there. I was just reading on the back here. Okay, um, it's got two LEDs, two buttons. Power rails are broken out. Looks like a nice little proto shield. I, I bought these when I was developing 
this thing, but I realized quickly that just using a, a, a blank proto shield was the way to go. So I got some of those. But anyway, that's it. Leave me a comment. What are you going to do with it? Tell me about a cool, cool project that doesn't have to be ham radio related. And I will ship this to you. Um, as long as you're not in like Kazakhstan or some place that you can't ship to. Um, but um, I'll ship it to you. Slow. <laughs> but it's yours free. So there you go, guys. That's it. You guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay tuned. There's always more in 73.